This video is about stopping distances for cars that are braking. In the video, we're going to be talking about defining the thinking, braking and stopping distances. We're going to be talking about reaction times, uh, what factors affect the braking of a vehicle, and we're going to be using graphs to calculate distances. As always, um, remember to use the pause button, take notes as you go along, bring any questions you have to the next lesson. So here we have a velocity time graph. We've already looked at velocity time graphs earlier in the course. So what I want you to do is to press the pause button and try and describe the journey that you can see on this velocity time graph. Okay, so hopefully the sorts of things that you've come up with. Uh, to start with, we're traveling at a constant velocity here. This is all constant velocity. And then suddenly the velocity starts to decrease and we can see, because this line here is a straight line, not a curve, that the deceleration of the car must be at a constant rate. Okay, so let's have a little look at some of the labels we've got on this graph. So what we've got is at this point here, we saw a hazard in the road. We were driving our car at a constant velocity and we saw a hazard in the road. Then, this time here, between the hazard being seen and the brakes being applied, that's our reaction time, and that can vary between drivers. Then at this point here, we apply the brakes, so we put our foot on the brake pedal, and then the car starts to brake until it comes to a stop, and hopefully we've avoided that hazard. Um, now one really important thing to highlight right now, but we'll go over it again, is to remember that the greater the speed the vehicle is travelling at, the greater the braking force needed to bring the car to a stop. Okay? So we're now going to define some of our terminology that we're going to be using during this tutorial. And these definitions are important to be aware of. You have to understand the difference between these different distances. Um, so first of all, we have the stopping distance, the total distance travelled by the vehicle between seeing the hazard and the car stopping. The thinking distance is the distance travelled by the vehicle during the reaction time. And the braking distance is the distance travelled by the vehicle between the brakes being applied and the vehicle stopping. And a really nice way to think about this is that the stopping distance equals the thinking distance plus the braking distance. So stopping distance equals thinking distance plus braking distance. Let's now apply that to a graph. So here we have a sketch of um, the velocity time graph that we saw earlier. Um, you can see it's the same shape. We're traveling at a constant velocity. Then we start decelerating at a constant rate until we come to a stop. We've got the point where the hazard was seen here and we've got the point where the brakes were applied. So let's try and apply some of those definitions. So the thinking distance was the distance traveled during the reaction time of the driver. So between the hazard being seen and the brakes being applied. So that's this distance here. Remember, we can calculate the distance travelled from a velocity time graph by the area under the graph. So this bit here is the thinking distance. The braking distance was the distance travelled between the brakes being applied and the vehicle coming to a stop. So this area here, this triangle area here, that is the braking distance. Now remember that the stopping distance was equal to the thinking distance plus the braking distance. So this whole area here is our stopping distance. The reaction time here that we've seen, it varies from person to person. It can vary from between 0.2 seconds, maybe for like a fighter jet pilot, and 0 0.0 seconds for someone that's half asleep most of the time. The normal reaction time on average for people is 0 0.7 seconds. Now, um, we can look at a variety of factors that affect the stopping distance of a vehicle. Um, just trying to get rid of that. So, factors that affect the velocity, the stopping distance of a vehicle, the velocity, adverse road and weather conditions, old tyres or worn brakes, having a tired driver, um, if the driver has consumed alcohol or drugs, or if 
the driver is being distracted. So let's have a little think and see if we can fill in this table. What would be great is if you drew this table out and tried to fill it in without the video and then compared your answers to the answers that we get. So press pause and have a go at that now. So let's go through some answers. Um, velocity. If we increase the velocity, are we going to change the thinking distance? Yes, we are. Are we going to change the braking distance? Yes, we are. So are we going to change the stopping distance? Yes. Adverse road and weather conditions. Is that going to change the thinking distance? No. You'll still travel the same distance while you're thinking about applying the brakes. Will it change the braking distance? Yes, it will. And therefore, it will change the stopping distance. This is because if we have an icy road or a wet road, there's less friction. And so the braking force will be smaller. And so the um, braking distance will be bigger. What about if we've got old tyres or worn brakes? That's not going to change the thinking distance. It will change the braking distance. Again, if we have old tyres, there's not going to be um, as much friction with the road. If we have worn brakes, they're not going to be able to apply such a large braking force. So the braking distance will get bigger and the stopping distance will get bigger. What about a tired driver? That can affect the thinking distance because tired people have slower uh, reaction times. And so it's going to take longer for the driver to recognise that they need to apply the brakes. It shouldn't change the braking distance, but it will change the stopping distance. Uh, what if the driver has consumed alcohol or drugs? Well, that is going to have a big impact on the thinking distance because it has a big impact on the reaction time of the driver. It shouldn't change the braking distance. It will therefore change the stopping distance. And finally, if the driver has been distracted by noisy music or passengers, that is going to change their reaction time. It shouldn't change the braking distance. It will change the stopping distance. Let's have a think about why some of those factors affected the distances using the graph. So here's our velocity time graph for our journey where we're braking the car and coming to a stop. Um, so if we increase the velocity, we increase the thinking distance and the braking distance. Why is that? So if we're increasing the velocity, you can just imagine that the um, this line here me, is going to be higher up. And so the area of here and of this triangle here are going to get bigger. So increase velocity, increase the thinking distance, increase braking distance. Let's have a think about some of the other factors. If I do anything that will increase the driver's reaction time, so if I'm distracting the driver, if the driver is tired, if the driver's taken drugs or consumed alcohol, then this reaction time is going to get bigger. So this distance here, this time here will get bigger. And so the area under the graph will get bigger. If I do anything to the car that means that I can't apply the same braking force, then the deceleration will get smaller, so the gradient will get smaller, so the gradient will be less steep, so it'll go from here to, let's say, being like this, and then the area under the triangle will get bigger. So you can use this graph to understand and work out everything you need to know about this topic. You just have to be clear about the definitions and the shape of the graph. Now we're going to use the graph to do some calculations. So we're going to, from this graph, we're going to take some numbers and we're going to calculate the thinking distance, the braking distance and the stopping distance. So if we have a look, we need to know the area of this rectangle here. That's going to give us their thinking distance. The area of a rectangle is the base times the height. If I take the numbers off the graph, the base is going to be 6 minus 5, so that's 1. And the height is going to be um, 10, so I get an area of 10 metres. So the thinking distance is 10 metres. If I now look at calculating the braking distance, the, dis the distance is going to be the area of this triangle here. The area of a right angle triangle is half times the base times the height. So it's half times the base is uh, between 10 and 6, so that's 4. And the height of the triangle is 10, so that gives a braking distance of 20 metres. To find the stopping distance, remember the stopping distance is the thinking distance plus the braking distance. So my stopping distance is 10 metres plus 20 metres, which gives me a stopping distance of 30 metres. 
We also need to be able to interpret graphs that we've been provided um, showing different things. So it could be showing the relationship between the velocity of the vehicle and the stopping distance of the vehicle. It could be a graph showing us um, some information about um, tyre tread depth versus braking distance. So I've got some graphs for us to look at here and for us to practice discussing. This one is from the Highway Code. You can see that thinking distance is in blue, braking distance is in red, and both of those two together are going to give us the stopping distance. Okay. Now, whenever you're interpreting a graph that you've been provided by the examiner, you need to look really carefully at the units and axes. So here we can see that we're going down. As we go down here, it's actually getting faster, so we've gone from 20 miles an hour to 70 miles an hour. And here uh, you can see that we've got the thinking, braking, and then overall the stopping distances. So if we talk about what this shows, we can say as the speed increases, the stopping distance increases, you can see it gets bigger. But you can also see that the thinking distance increases and that the braking distance increases. And you can have a look at how much the thinking distance increases with speed compared to how much the braking distance increases with speed. We've got another graph down here. This is speed versus stopping distances. So this is the same information, but presented in a different graph. So here we've got stopping distance in meters. So you can see the axes are the other way around on this one. And then here you've got the speed of the car. Thinking distance is in green, braking distance in red. Both together will give us a stopping distance. So again, as you increase the speed of the car, the stopping distance increases. And you can see that we have got an increase in the thinking distance, but we've got a bigger increase in the braking distance with speed. And then finally, another one. Again, you're going to be able to apply your understanding to all sorts of different situations. Just always look at the axes on the graph. So this is a graph of braking distance. So we're only talking about the braking distance and the tread depth in millimetres on a tyre. So um, if we have a look at the trend shown here, we can see that as the um, tread depth increases, the braking distance decreases. So here we've got um, a high tread depth and a short braking distance, but as the tread depth gets lower down here, so here we've only got a tread depth of 1.5 millimetres or 1 millimetre, and here you can see we've got a much bigger braking distance. So the deeper the tread, the shorter the braking distance. Now what's interesting is they've then given us for two different road surfaces. So this graph can also tell us about the effect of the road surface on the braking distance. Um, because they've told us here that the speed is being kept the same at 40 miles an hour. Um, so if we have a look here, this green one is hot rolled asphalt, so that's tarmac. And this red one here is smooth concrete. So we can say that the braking distance for similar um, tyre tread depths is smaller on hot rolled asphalt than it is on smooth concrete. So the road conditions, the type of road surface is going to change our braking distance. So our braking distance will be shorter on tarmac than it will on concrete. Again, you could be given any graph, you just have to look at the axes and give yourself some thinking time to think about what the graph is showing. So if we now start linking this understanding of stopping distances and um, bringing vehicles to a stop to the work that we've previously done on um, energy stores and on work done and on forces, we can explain what happens when the brakes are applied to a car. We're going to use facts though here. Um, so you can see we've got a science fact and then a so, science fact and then a so, science fact and then a so. So we say something sciencey and then we say so we observe this happening. So let's have a little look. A moving car has a store of kinetic energy. So for the car to stop, the kinetic energy must be transferred to another store. The brakes of a vehicle apply a frictional force on the wheels so the brakes get hot. The kinetic energy store of the car has been transferred to thermal energy in the brakes, so work has been done on the car. Uh, the greater the braking force, the greater the deceleration of the vehicle. This is just a, a point to note down now that's important. Um, large decelerations may lead to brakes overheating or the loss of control of the car, so skidding. 
So we've got this constant, this constant balance that we need to strike when we're driving. We don't want to be going so fast in the vehicle that the deceleration needs to be so large to come to an emergency stop that we will lose control of the car. And we take this into account when we're setting the speed limits for different locations. So the speed limit speed limit around a tight bend or near a school might be different to the speed limit on a motorway. Um, and that's all part of setting the speed limits and part of understanding how to drive safely and following the highway code. So that is the end of the tutorial on stopping distances. Um, hopefully you've found that helpful in terms of taking notes that you can revise from and that you can understand. Um, bring any questions you have about anything that hasn't made sense to the lesson and then in the lesson you're going to be given some practice calculations just to check your understanding of this topic um, and some practice explanations as well.